So here we are. We're over the first hump. We've got three oscillators and a beard, and we've covered a lot of the technical ground of getting started. In this video, we're going to cover probably one of the most important aspects of this macro page design, and that's setting up multiple pages. Now, if we've got multiple pages, we can have more components to our instrument. So the first thing we need to understand is stacks. A stack is pretty much what it is. It's like a stack of pancakes, except it's not, you can't eat it. You've got to right mouse click to create a stack. And a stack is really an operational folder, which we can set to follow particular instructions. I've created my first stack and I'm calling it pages because inside of this stack, I'm going to store all of the pages of my instrument. Inside of this stack, I'm right mouse clicking to create another stack. Rather than creating a new stack, I'm just going to duplicate this stack. And once again, the logical nature of this software development means that the number is also increasing with every stack that I create. Now I'm dragging everything that I did in the first video in that disabled group straight up into the first stack, which is kind of like page one. But before we can turn that into page one, we have to do a few more things. The first thing being we need to right mouse click and create a variable. A variable is a condition or a value that can change based on behavior. So for instance, I'm gonna say, hey, when I do this, I want you to change the page to this page. Before we do that, we need to set up an integer. Now an integer is either a positive or a negative number, but let's not get too technical. It's quite easy to see once I show you. What is important is that I name this integer appropriately. I'm gonna call it pages because it kind of makes sense to me anyway, because in my own mind, I'm creating pages. I'm going to my main stack and I'm going to the value and I'm saying at pages, which is kind of like an email address. Basically I'm saying, hey, you connect up to that integer, which is now called pages. I'll just point out now for the record that inside of variables, zero is really one because zero is actually an entity or it's a thing. So I want to set this maximum to the amount of pages I've got. Considering zero is a one, we've got zero, one, two, three, four, which is five pages. That makes sense, right? Hey, look, if it doesn't, don't worry, just do what I'm doing and stay with me and we're gonna get there. I've gone back to my browser menu and now I'm gone to basic controls and switches. And I'm looking for this particular one guy, this radio switch. It's blue, it's hard to miss. It's also on the front page of the additional control. This switch is kind of important for this role because it's got the properties that we need to be able to say when I click on this blue switch here, I want you to take me to page one. Now just watch what I've done here. I've dragged it up and I'm just placing it anywhere but anywhere isn't really exactly where it should be. So I need to make sure I'm on the macro page. So the idea is you need to make sure that your focus is right. Make sure you're putting that switch or that resource into the right place. If not, you can always drag it up and down in the GUI tree. Whilst I'm copying and pasting these labels using Alt and Option again, I should tell you that it's important that these switches go up in the macro page because whatever's up in that top macro page should be visible across all pages. So whatever's inside the groups that are placed inside the stacks are going to be visible on whatever page we have selected. And that's why it's important that these switches go up the top because you don't want to go, hey, take me to page two and be stuck in page two forever because my God, that could be like the ring modulation section. And I don't think you want to be stuck there for eternity. Once again, you could use the guidelines, use the ruler or use the positioning inside of the properties to clean up those labels. I'm not really paying much attention to it at the moment. Moving ahead, we need to click on this first label and then give it a value. So once again, we're going to say at pages with a capital P. I said before that variables use zero as one. This first layer's number is going to be zero, but we need to turn it on. So make sure you click on that little button or the icon next to it. Now the next layer or page, cause it's going to control a page is going to be one, which is page two. So zero is one, one's two, two is three, three is four, four is five. Hopefully that's starting to make sense. If you get this wrong, then the switches aren't going to work. So it's always a fairly obvious place to come back to just in case you go to your macro page and test it and it doesn't work. Once again, it's all about retracing your steps. This is the moment where we all hold our breath for the first time anyway, because this is where we test it. So I go to the macro page and click on page two and back to one. And to me, that seems to be working. Of course, there's nothing in the other pages, but I can see that they turn blue when I click on them, which is a fairly good sign. The only way we can really tell though is by going back to our stack and selecting page two 
and adding something inside of page two. And it looks pretty good there because if I'm changing from stack one to two, the pages are, are changing. Now in stack two, I'm dragging out the stack area and let's just get a basic control or an anima knob or something and drag it up. And now if I change pages, you can see that that's working. Although there is one more specification that is really quite important. Inside of this stack, I need to create a group. So I'm right mouse clicking and saying create group. Now that's sitting inside of the stack. And if I draw it over the knob, it looks like the knob's inside it, but it's not because it's not inside it in the GUI tree. So I'm just gonna pick up on it and drag it in. And now that knob's sitting inside of the group. I'm going to focus on explaining the importance of groups as we go along in this video series. Beforehand, once again, it's important to save. So right mouse click, say save as, and now we can save it as another file name. And it means we can always come back to this step if we wanna take our instrument design or creation on another path. Hey, there's plenty of videos. Now we know how to make up pages. Let's get our hands dirty in the next video and continue along building this virtual slash analog synth. I'll see you there.